everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Marty Loftus. Uh, we're going to be talking uh, about our AP portfolio submissions today. I'm joined by uh, Celestin and Maryland. We're going to be talking about the AP drawing portfolio as well as the AP 2D design portfolio. Um, these are very similar. We're going to run through some similar content, um, but I think you're going to get some value out of all these things that we're look, going to be looking at today. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, again, uh, welcome. My name is uh, Marty Loftus. Uh, I teach at Denver School of the Arts in Denver, Colorado, and we're going to start off looking at work from the AP 3D Art and Design portfolio. Uh, we're going to be talking about revision and ideation in the AP Art and Design portfolios today. Um, and here's just a little bit of an overview before we get started. In this lesson, you're going to learn what it make, means to revise artworks and ideas and what it may look like in your art portfolio, how to document, practice, experimentation, and revision in your portfolio as well. So those will be our focal points today. So let's start off with what you need to know. We've mentioned this in all of our videos. Uh, once again, the big changes this year are that you're gonna be submitting three works now instead of five into your selected works and 10 images instead of 15 into your sustained investigation. For some of you, again, that might be uh, make things a little bit easier. And for some of you, it might be a little bit tougher to try and get all that information into 10 images, but we'll talk about some solutions to that as well. A reminder that this due date has also been extended to May 26th at 1159 p.m. Eastern time. So today we've talked a lot about core skills, the ones that we're gonna be looking at today, and I can let you pause this. You can read about this in a little bit more detail at your leisure, uh, but through practice, experimentation, and revision, and then communication reflection is really talking about how you're going to be writing about all these visual interpretations of that experimentation, revision, and practice as well. So if we look at the scoring rubric here, again, it's a three-point rubric, and we really, we really want to focus just on that three. What does it mean, and what is our aiming point to get our top score for this part of the portfolio? Uh, and this is what that looks like. So we're looking at the visual evidence of practice, experimentation, and revision that demonstrates development of that sustained investigation, as well as you also need that written evidence to describe and show that evidence of your practice, experimentation, and revision. So what does that look like? Um, and let's talk about the visual representations of that first. Um, Again, you've only have 10 slides, but you do have to represent these things visually. So how do you do that? Uh, as an example here for this student, this shows the practice of actually creating a work uh, that he's going to be submitting in his sustained investigation part of the portfolio, as well as experimentation. This is a slide that represents a piece that he worked on. Um, he's trying to make a mechanical piece uh, for his 3D uh, sustained investigation. Um, he initially worked with batteries, couldn't quite get enough juice. So this is a photograph that actually represents something that did not work, a failure on his part. So he needed to revise. Uh, he did find that another piece of equipment, in this case a portable drill, had enough oomph behind it that it would make this project work. But again, that's three slides, right? That's three images that you would have to submit to your art portfolio out of 10. So what are some options? Can you compile these into three separate slides so it only takes up one for your uh, part of the portfolio? And I'm suggesting to this student that they might even want to label that so that an AP reader has no confusion. We understand right away that we are looking at this student's practice, their experimentation, and their revision. Now that's only that visual component too. They will be able to talk about this once again in their written portion. Uh, and this is just a quick look at that final piece as it is in motion. Again, you won't be able to submit any video for yours. Uh, he would probably have to do this in a series of still shots, but kind of fun to see how these things work in action. So the second part of this, once again, and the visual is only the first, right? You do need to provide written evidence that describes, uh, once again, evidence of practice experimentation or revision. So you might not necessarily address all three of those, but you do need to at least address some of that in your written evidence. So this is where the main part of that's going to go. If you've logged in already and started to upload, you should have seen this. You've got two parts that you need to address, identifying the questions or inquiry 
for your sustained investigation. And then that second part, you can really address specific works that you may have done and how they reflect that initial inquiry that you've created. One of the things you may want to consider is for each one of those images, you have these small spaces as well. So under materials and processes, it's only 100 characters. It's very small. But is there a way that you can utilize this space so that you can further uh, uh, make, make mention of those things that you've done uh, in there so that you are meeting and matching the written component as well as the visual component? In a second example, we see a student who's still working in three-dimensional, but now we're working uh, more with low relief. Um, really beautiful piece, uh, but uh, we don't see a lot of those three-dimensional qualities. So what do you do, right? Even without any sort of context here, by the addition of that student's hand and a tool, we start to see the processes that were involved with this, the kind of experimentation, uh, experimentation that they were using to create these uh, different types of textures, uh, along with different tools. Uh, they may explain a little bit about why one tool worked and why one didn't, how they needed to create revision between those things. And again, the idea of maybe compiling these slides together, these images together, so you're not taking quite as much space, getting more information into a smaller amount for that student. And then again, just a reminder, as you're talking about your portfolio holistically, you've got that whole first part of your written component, but with your individual pieces, you might be able to squeeze just a little bit into these areas as well. Again, with 10 slides, it does make it a little bit more difficult to get all of those rubric points, but by compiling these things together, it might make it a little bit easier for you and you might have more space to show more of your finished works. So to debrief, uh, just before we get on to Celestine and Maryland here, once again, this is your aiming point. If you think about this part, of the rubric, if you can really think about how that visual evidence as well as the written evidence uh, describes or visually demonstrates the development of that sustained investigation, as well as the practice experimentation and revision. Those are the big things that we want to focus on as we uh, move on here. So my portion is done. I'm actually going to pass this off to Marilyn. Um, thank you for tuning in. And Marilyn, it's all yours. Thank you, Marty. Excellent presentation as usual. All right, so we are going to begin talking about the 2D portfolio. Let me get my screen up. All right, and again, uh, thank you and for being with us. And my name is Marilyn Proctor Gibbons and I'm again, uh, from Tallahassee, Florida, and I'm at Lincoln High School. And to get, again, today we're going to talk a little bit about practice, experimentation, and revision. And of course, we've already gone over some of the key points, so this will not be redundant. I'm going to kind of speed along. Uh, this I like to read every time, uh, but the most important part to talk about today is conduct a sustained investigation through practice, experimentation, and revision skillfully synthesize materials, processes, and ideas. And of course, the writing is always gonna be important. Our key skills, two and three. And our rubric, which we out a little bit uh, more in detail by Marty. And the key terms, I like to make sure you access those terms. Uh, uh, with the rubric that we have available to, for you. And the ones we're going to focus on is practice, experimentation, revision, and development. So in our uh, rubric, these words will also be defined, and that's a very important thing for you to be able to look through. So we are going to look at the AP Central website again and look at some images, and let's talk about how some of the artists there revise their work. So what we have here, we'll go back. Okay, here we go. Uh, we have the written evidence that's shown here for this particular portfolio, and I use sample four for this one. And the person who uh, wrote this was very detailed. It's a very good example of a written of written evidence, because what I like to do and like to tell my students is to talk about the particular slides you want the viewers to go back to and reference. And so here in parentheses, immediately you see 
that the reference is made to certain slides as you move through the, re the written commentary or the written uh, evidence. So uh, briefly, I'm going to just jump in to this little section right here on the portfolio uh, because I don't really want to spend too much time, um, but this is a great portfolio to look at. So the written evidence, of course, uh, the student describes ongoing revision of the overall idea and approach to creating their work. And I think that's extremely important. Words like initially, my work was a collection of photographs of objects that were in my house and were uh, the direct cause of conflict. And then here, a transition starting to happen. As my investigation continued, uh, you know, asking self questions, I decided to incorporate the actual objects as opposed to taking photographs of them. That is a pivotal point in this particular written uh, evidence. And it was a great idea for the student to include that. And then here, you know, to, you know, bring it home, drive the nail home, it's like, which is where the shift occurs. So the student recognizes that in this, at this point in her portfolio, his portfolio, there a shift occurred and give, is, gives us a slide to look at for us to see that shift. So let's go look at, um, photographs. So these are the initial photographs that the student took for the portfolio. Food, uh, packaging, and money. And they were photographed. Looks like they were cut out and, and adhered to the wall uh, in an installation fashion. All right. So then a shift occurred, as stated here in this um, written evidence. And so let's go look at how the shift occurred and how it occurred. So the shift occurred, they're not just photographs, the student decided to actually use the objects. So these are actual pieces of paper, maybe they, they may be letters, they may be mail, who knows what they may be, but this is uh, what the student decided to do to hang these in the space. And then another transition occurred also on slide four, where the photographs of the jars are there, but the artist decided to use beads, the actual beads to hang underneath there. So you see that the transition, the shift is occurring, which is very important. And not only is it in the written text, but it's in the actual, the visual evidence is there as well, which is extremely important. So the artist continued to use different processes as uh, the portfolio uh, advanced and used, it, used projected video. So if you look at this uh, work, the artist use the video and Marty just showed the video of the fork and I thought that was interesting and this artist instead of, you know maybe you know they use the video but they decided to capture certain frames from the video to show their process and so I think that is a very important a way of showing showcasing what uh, the artist wants us to get from this um, the artist is putting this thing together and once it's together it is then displayed in front of it so if you walk into this space, which these are installations, you are to walk, walk and interact into the space. Um, these process videos, uh, which ended up being stills, are being used to really bring the point across. And here, text, the text messages, it took me a while to recognize what that was, but these are text messages. And so immediately when you think of text messages, you think about the fact that the deconstructed object that is lying below these projected images are possibly a phone, maybe a tablet or something that created these particular text messages. And then it's very important also for students to realize that in addition to process photos, it's great to be, uh, it's great to include details so that you can, the uh, reader can get an up close view of what you're, you're trying to show in uh, your visual evidence. So very well done in terms of documenting uh, using different materials, practicing, experimenting, uh, shifting from uh, one thing to the other, feeling as if though I'm sure that what they were trying to accomplish was more successful. And then the last part uh, of this particular portfolio shows how the artists took objects and deconstructed them. So as you, you know, they not only did they deconstruct them, then they reorganized them and they reordered them and position them in uh, spaces in this particular installation. So a lot of work here as it relates to working with different materials, experimenting, seeing what worked, um, but still showing a progression through the portfolio, not fragmented, but 
um, a progression. There is revision that is occurring and in the end, it brings the portfolio together and it shows that they experiment with the materials, it showed they experiment with their process uh, and that they asked several questions and they uh, really thought it through. You will be able to go um, back and read this in its entirety and um, I'm going to go ahead and reveal the score for this one, but I think they uh, really did a great job in um, achieving the highest score. Uh, there was lots of visual evidence of, of practice, experimentation again, and revision, and they, um, the written evidence was well written and it described how the sustained investigation shows evidence of practice experimentation and revision. So I really think that this particular student did a, a really good job of being clear how the relationships between the visual and the written evidence flowed. So the score for this particular portfolio is a three. And so again, the commentary is available online and it shows you what the, the uh, AP reader who scored it gave it and how they um, they even talk about how successful parts and pieces of the portfolio were. So I really um, appreciate this artist. They did an amazing job of really looking at the practice and really looking at what they created and practicing and experimenting and what a range of media that they had as available um, also, and, um, and using uh, untraditional materials. I think that is a very important thing to, to emphasize here at this point, as well as installations. Like all of your work, even though you're a 2D artist, does not have to be pencil and paper or paintings. This is a 2D artist as well, but was expressed as an installation. So they're interacting with the entire space. So make sure that your visual information and your uh, written information uh, have a relationship. That's very important and you will be very successful. So I am going to go ahead and pass the baton to Celestin and um, let him talk more in detail with you about drawing. So thank you very much for your time. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Marty, and thank you, Marilyn. Uh, very good presentation. Awesome. Uh, I'm going to wrap it up here for this session and uh, get into the last bits of this for drawing as it relates to revision and ideation. You guys already know who I am. I'm going to pass right through that and let's get into the lesson overview for the drawing portfolio. Here are some uh, core skills I just want to briefly run through, and Marilyn and Marty uh, brushed up on these quickly for the uh, 2D design and 3D portfolios. But in the drawing section, uh, we're looking at 2B, 3D, and 3E. And 2B states that to conduct a sustained investigation through art and design that demonstrates practice, experimentation, and revision by a guided question. 3D looks for you to identify in writing questions that guided a sustained investigation through art and design. And 3E will ask you to describe in writing how a sustained investigation through art and design shows evidence of practice, experimentation, and revision guided by your question. Let's take a look at what you need to know. I always like to uh, come into the essential question just so we can look at that. And inside of this area, we're gonna be looking at two big ideas. Big idea two, which is asking you to make art and design, and big idea three, which is asking you to present art and design. And just above, you know, we wanna look at that uh, highlighted area at the very bottom there. Artists and designers select materials, processes, and ideas to investigate as potential components for making. So we're going to see a lot of that in what I'm about to show you here. And I also want you to, uh, you know, just 
take a look at a lot of the images that are in here really closely because a lot of what I'm about to get into will actually be image based more so. Uh, if we take a quick look at some of these uh, course descriptors, 2B is asking you to conduct a sustained investigation through our design that demonstrates practice, experimentation, and revision guided by your questions. And 2B4, you know, as students that are working on your drawings at home, you want to practice, experiment, and revise using different types of materials, processes, and ideas. So this whole idea of revision and ideation inside of your drawing portfolio becomes essential. Uh, you're looking to develop understanding of your drawing skills. You're looking to lead to refinement, distillation, elaboration, and discovery. And you're also looking to guide and further your investigation, leading to discovery, transformation, and in-depth exploration. Very important things to note. And then the last uh, course uh, key descriptors here, 2B6 has several bullet points that you ought to take a quick look at once you're in the CED, just so you're familiar with them. Uh, it's asking you to conduct a sustained investigation to our design to demonstrate practice, experimentation, revision that guides your question. But as you do that, you should be thinking about formulating and selecting questions to guide that revision. You should be selecting ideas in relation to questions that guide your investigation. You should be uh, looking forward to practicing with those ideas in relation to the question that guides your investigation and experimenting with those ideas along the way as you're creating and revision, revision, revision of those ideas. So don't let your first initial drawing be your last drawing because a lot of students will start something, uh, give up on it and never come back and deal with it. I always like to tell my students, don't throw anything away because something that you're working on, you may be able to circle back around and revisit So a little later on. So very, very important. And documentation, revision, and ideas in relation to your uh, guiding questions. Documentation uh, doesn't necessarily have to stop with you. I mean, you could have other people document your work for you, your parents, your uh, brothers and sisters, and, you know, maybe your aunts and uncle, anyone that might be home with you at the time. And if it's possible, if no one's there with you, you could actually just set your uh, camera phone up or your camera and set a timer and try to take photos along the way. So that doc documentation piece is so, so important and it's going to be used in your portfolio. So take advantage of that. Uh, you want to reflect on your revision and your ideas along the way also. And uh, these last two bullet points just really ask you to exchange some constructive criticism uh, as it relates to your revision and your ideation along the way and to continue to revise your inquiry and your questions along the way as well. So it's important to continue to always rewrite, rewrite, and revise, and revise, okay? And then the last two key points inside of here is 3D to identify and writing questions that guided your sustained investigation through art and design. And lastly, to describe in writing how a sustained investigation through art and design shows evidence of practice, experimentation, and revision guided by your questions. So let's move on and start to take a look at some images as it relates to revision and ideas inside of your work. Uh, these are all student examples I've pulled from many places. Uh, uh, some of them are students of mine. Some of those uh, pieces that you're gonna see coming up here are students who submitted uh, for the uh, AP drawing portfolio in the past. So in this uh, particular student's work, uh, if you take a look on the right side and you can read along with me you see some things happening in the student's work where the student's uh, work shows evidence of practice, experimentation, and revision guided by their questions, obviously, inside of their uh, sustained investigation. And looking at the work, you can actually see them practicing with their ideas because you see the layering up of the materials that they're working with in the drawing and how they're working back into the drawing in many different ways. You even see a little graffito built into this particular drawing, which is beautiful. Um, 
drawing practice experimentation and revision using materials processes and ideas that can develop understanding of uh, the drawing skills in here is also important you can see that the student knows how to draw and that's really really the mo one of the key parts of the drawing portfolio whether it's an abstract piece or an observational piece show us that you really love to draw and you know how to draw because a lot of students forget that key aspect and things start to get tight and you want that freshness and that looseness in your drawing. And when you're experimenting and playing around, you know, you want to imagine that you're in your sketchbook, no one's around, and you're just having at it, having a good time. So that freedom of play is really good. Uh, refinement, distill distillation, uh, elaboration, and discovery. You see that showing up in here. You have a scene of a young uh, boy uh, sleeping and his cat is sleeping along with him and then it seems that there are images that are coming up around them that are dreamlike so you know really good play inside of here in terms of composition and how they're handling the drawing also documenting and revision and ideas also play a part inside of here so we definitely see some revisions we definitely see some uh, play with ideas and of course, you know, this is just one piece in this student's portfolio Like I said, I'm not going to necessarily go through and show you guys uh, a lot of uh, The student's portfolio, but I just want to get give you a snippet of a bunch of different portfolios and then of course the drawing skills uh, In terms of what we're looking for. We're looking for that strong use of mark making line surface space light and shade and compositional use and that definitely and certainly happens in this particular student's work. And this particular piece, you see the student uh, using a different type of surface to draw on, not necessarily paper, something non-traditional such as cardboard, metal, plastic, you know, uh, cloth, uh, fabric, and things of that sort could be used as a surface to work on also just to explore your mark making. So, and allowing us to see that evidence of practice experimentation and revision guided by your question inside of the work. The student definitely has practice uh, happening in terms of their ideas and there's also documenting in terms of the information that's going down on this particular surface. Now as we move past this and we start to look at some of the other images that I have for you, we start to see even more happening within these students' works. So the students' work here shows evidence of practice experimentation and revision inside of this uh, work, guided by obviously questions. And if we take a look at certain areas of this particular drawing, you can see a lot of play with space. There seems to be a, a kid or two who are, you know, built their own little tent using some uh, a, a couple of sheets and blankets and they're outside somewhere camping out you know, and you see the repeated drawings uh, of different things in the space. So there's a lot of experimentation going on and revision in terms of the overall idea, but you can start to see where they're heading in terms of this being an entire body of work also. And most importantly is you can definitely see their drawing skills in here also. Here's another student work where the work is leading to discovery, transformation, uh, and in-depth exploration within the work. Documentation and revision of ideas is also obvious in this work. And, you know, it's really fun to see students, you know, when they're working in, within the drawing portfolio, really start to play with materials and different surfaces because, you know, there's, there's just an excitement there knowing that they can pick up whatever is at hand and be able to use it. And while you guys are at home, uh, not necessarily in your classroom, be thinking about how you can use anything that's you know, around you in your home to be able to actually make a mark and to be able to draw, which is essential to uh, you know, having a portfolio that deals with revision and ideation and play and so on. So you could really transform and explore how we see uh, your work just in the materials that you're using. In this particular student's work, the student is documenting and revising different ideas within their drawing here. You can see the initial sketch. And just like uh, what Marty uh, was showing earlier and also Marilyn, where the students actually are combining images to tell the story 
within the uh, drawing portfolio. So here you see a very beginning sketch where the student is exploring their composition and trying to figure out how they want to set up the uh, fi final uh, view for the pieces of work. And that exploration just is played out here in terms of the student's drawing. And it's just beautiful to see the stages. And I like to tell the students that are working with me you know, it's not about those baby steps in terms of, you know, documenting this stuff, you know, try to take big leaps along the way, you know, so we're not seeing these baby steps. Take, take us through maybe from the beginning to end, but let it be a bigger jump. Here's another student's drawing portfolio, and you can start to see some refinement of marks and playing around with uh, different ideas in terms of setting up compositions, some layering uh, in terms of the figure. So, and these are just beautiful initial sketches for a finalized idea, which you kind of see in the middle in terms of developing a character, developing space, and telling a story. So, and it's awesome when you see students bringing all those components together in a drawing to create something that's very successful, but seeing that build up is really nice to see also. In this particular student's uh, drawing portfolio, you know, the student is actually working uh, with developing a product. And, and a lot of times when you think about product design, you think about, you know, how it relates to design, but there's so much of uh, product design that's drawing based. So, and this particular student actually submitted that portfolio work that you see here for a drawing portfolio. And, you know, through this investigation, this student is learning to, you know, revise and document his ideas and practice in, in terms of what he's doing. And there's this buildup in terms of learning to draw and deal with, uh, you know, mechanical parts and different animals and how you bring the two together in this work, which is really, you know, nice to see the student's curiosity, his play, and how he's trying to figure out all of these different things that it, as it relates to his uh, portfolio. So just really nice, you know, documentation happening here and creating a nice buildup for us to look at. And right here, I have two samples of work that are actually on the AP site, and I won't take you into the site to look at these. You guys can go online and check these out yourself. But uh, sample two and sample four in the site are really good examples of, you know, different ways of using drawing in a portfolio because if you take a look at sample four it feels very three-dimensional but those are all marks that are playing out in that particular sample and then the student is actually making marks on top of those objects which make it drawing portfolio okay so it's important to understand how flexible the three different portfolios are also and how they cross over into each other because something that could seem three-dimensional, so long as the student is, you know, using those different drawing skills on that three-dimensional surface could easily be put into the drawing portfolio, but vice versa could also jump into the 2D portfolio as well. So there's a lot of crossover between the three portfolios, and that's what makes the uh, portfolio so dynamic. And then here in sample two, you see this artist who's documented her process and you can see the different materials she's actually using to draw with actually. You see a broom there, uh, a paintbrush, which is attached to a stick and some other types of material that she's working with. And she's actually working very large in scale, which is always wonderful to see when students uh, decide to get outside of their box and explore in a totally different way. So, in this particular student situation, you know, it's just an amazing amount of drawing being uh, done here using all sorts of different materials. She's actually even using water from a nearby river to actually explore that and uh, bring that into her work as well. It's just beautiful ideation and revision happening, you know, in this student's portfolio. When you go in online and you look at the student work in sample two and sample four and see the entire sustained investigation, you really get a chance to uh, explore what these two students have done in terms of their revision and their ideation within their uh, sustained investigation. 
So just beautiful stuff happening. And I just wanted to touch on these quickly because there's so much to cover. Uh, and I think a lot of it can be slowed down once you get into the fight and you can really go through them slowly and, and enjoy them. So Marty and uh, uh, Marilyn covered both of the, these uh, pieces of information. So here you see the uh, scoring criteria within the uh, portfolio. And as it relates to revision and ideation in rows B and C, we can see you know, the score breakdown, which both of them went through. It's important to notice the key words you know, when you're going in and you're looking at your own work, just so you can break down the brackets as you're creating your own work and trying to see where you fall within the one, two, and three, because that could actually help you if you're being honest with yourself <laughs> to just figure out, you know, what your own score is along the way. And that's really, really important. So, but like Marty said earlier, uh, you know, you, you really want to shoot for that three score. And if you can pull out, you know, that demonstrating uh, development and some of that clearly evident uh, synthesis inside of the work, then you're shooting in the right direction in terms of what we're looking for in the portfolio. And that's in both sections, the selected works as well as the uh, sustained investigation. And this is just the uh, criteria breakdown for the sustained investigation very quickly. And it's just a score range between one and five here. And you can see the key score descriptors when you uh, pause this video to check out some of the things I have underlined here. So you have the breakdown between the one, the two, the three, the four, and the five, okay? So very good stuff inside of the uh, rubric. Make sure you're reading it and checking it out so you get all of this information. And just a brief, to brief very quickly and run through a summary. The drawing skills are present in the uh, drawing portfolio that we're looking for. You know, we're looking for that strong use of mark making, line and surface, uh, space, light and shade, and composition. Very, very important uh, skills to hit on inside of your drawing as you're working. Have drawing practice and experimentation and revision and use of materials, processes, and ideas that you can develop uh, understanding with, along with your drawing skills. And be sure that your inquiry statement touches on the revision and ideas you will be presenting in your sustained investigation, which is essential. And lastly, take, close, take a close look at the verbiage in the rubrics uh, for selected works and the sustained investigation so you can separate the slight differences among the scoring scales. Okay. And here are the key score descriptors that I talked about, and here they are highlighted. And not to forget the dates that Marty and Marilyn touched on. So just keep that in mind in terms of the, of the uh, amounts and the accounts and the deadlines for submitting your exam so you can get it all in on time. So lastly, just to mention, the device and internet access for students. We know that not all students have access to the internet or a device. We are working on solutions to help students to get what they need to show their best work. If you need mobile tools or connectivity or know someone who does, you can reach out to us directly and let us know at cd.org backslash tech. Thank you everyone for watching the session today. Thank you, Marty and Marilyn, and hopefully all of you guys have a successful portfolio. Thank you and bye-bye.